Hello everyone, we're now here on day 16. Many of you have been with us since day one. Thank you. Our search and recovery team continued their efforts throughout the night and today, as always, and as we have stressed, this recovery is moving forward with great urgency as we work 24 hours a day on the pile to recover victims and bring closure to all of the families still waiting. We want to bring them news as quickly as we possibly can. We have now removed over 13 million pounds of concrete and debris. 60 trucks a day are working. And since our last briefing, our first responders have uncovered an additional 18 victims. Excuse me, I stand corrected. We have now uncovered an additional 14 victims of this tragedy. Uh, this brings the total number of confirmed fatalities to 78. This is a staggering and heartbreaking number that affects all of us very, very deeply. Please, please continue to keep all of the families in your prayers and in your hearts. Of the 78 confirmed victims, 47 have been identified and next of kin notified, 47. 200 people are accounted for with 62 people potentially still unaccounted for and our detectives continue to audit the list as they've done, verifying every single report that we receive and working to identify those who may have been recovered as quickly as possible so we can get accurate information. Today, the Broward Medical Examiner's Office has come on site to assist us with personnel. The Miami-Dade Medical examiner is doing uh, everything uh, they're fully staffed and they're working as fast as they can but it is very very valuable and critical that we provide some relief to those men and women working in the medical examiner's office doing this vital work and so it's we're very grateful to the support from Broward County uh, to help us allow our teams to ro rotate more frequently all those who have passed, all 78, are leaving behind loved ones. They're leaving behind devastated families. The magnitude of this tragedy is growing each and every day. It's an aching hole in the center of this close-knit family here in Surfside, a beautiful, small, close-knit community. We know that the hard work of beginning to rebuild is just beginning for so many of these families, and we are committed to staying with them every step of the process, every step. We will not leave these families. We put the families at the center of every single decision that we make since day one. We'll continue to do everything in our power to provide all the relief and all the support that they need, those who've been affected, the families waiting and grieving, and the survivors. We're providing wraparound social services at our Family Assistance Center. That includes grief, psychological counseling, spiritual counseling, financial assistance, lodging, and any other form of assistance. And I also want to highlight that the State Department of Financial Services has a table at this Family Assistance Center for insurance questions, which many of our families have, uh, and so they are there as well to assist. Also, as we discussed yesterday, the mental health and well-being of our first responders is also a key concern for all of us, and it is an urgent priority. Since the morning of day one, just hours after the collapse, our critical incident stress management team was on site, and we have rapidly added to that team with additional state and national resources in the following days. We also have peer support personnel assigned 24 hours a day at our fire stations. So there is support for all of our men and women working this site. We know that there will be long-term impacts as well for those on the front lines following this tragedy and our teams will continue to provide support 
to them as well. They have given so much of themselves in the past two weeks and we know in the months and years ahead they will continue as well to experience impacts from what they've seen and done. I also want to thank the Small Business Administration for their incredibly hard work and their partnership in providing support to the local businesses and families that have had an impact from this tragedy. And through their outreach, there have already been 68 applications received, including 40 from the business community. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, has made very significant progress in tagging and transporting pieces of forensic evidence from the pile. They've now collected over 200 pieces of evidence and they recently deployed a scientist from the physics measurement lab in Washington to assist with analysis. So please join me in continuing to pray for the families, those who have lost, those teams who haven't stopped since day one.